you know, the more I, I get involved in, in politics, the sadder I feel. Um, <laughs> and, and, and the reason is, is because everybody I deal with is a, is a Christian. Yeah. I don't spend any time with Democrats. You know, I, I mean, you should see the prayers that we have and then the way they vote. You know, it's mm. like, because really it's about the best we can do. You know, what's our best chances? What's our bigger fears? You know, like, nice. um, it's not about doing what's right. That's you know? being content. It's a that's fear totally of being losing content. control. That's that's what it is. Well, it's well when also you have somebody like Jared Patterson up there, I mean, you got to feel good tickets. about getting yeah. patted on the back and saying, hey, well, you didn't give up the whole farm, just half of it. And you yeah. walk away feeling like, man, I feel like I just won the lottery. Yeah. My, my favorite Jared Patterson story was he was in this meeting and uh, Janie, our, our head chair lady, she, she goes, uh, all right, let's keep the uh, jeering and booing down to a minimum tonight. And I'm like, I was new. I was like, you can <laughs> boo? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And awesome. uh, so now you got to keep it to a minimum. Yeah, just keep it to a minimum, you know? So that's yeah, crazy but, uh, stuff. Yeah, yeah, the more and more you 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 dive into this stuff, the the more and more depressing it gets. It's almost like there's no hope. Uh, thank God for people like you, Todd, that are that are yeah. willing to, you know, put put yourself out there in front of everybody and and be courageous to do that and and expose some of this stuff that people don't normally would know in in the side of politics. Yeah, uh, that I mean, I, I think the governor's race is the most important race that we have right now, and there's a bunch of really good men that are running. And I know the Bible says none of us are good. So I probably misspoke, but I really like a lot of the candidates that are running, you know, I really do. And I think they'll do a much, much better job than Abbott. Um, I think Abbott will probably run for president, um, you know, in a, in a fairly short period of time. Um, and I think he's, he's trying to, he's the middle. His dues. it's nauseating. Yeah. And he's trying to, you know, appease as many people as possible. Yeah. Right. Um, and, you know, I heard that he used to be, a, you know, a grassroots uh, conservative guy, right? Um, but That's what happens when you sell your soul. I think yeah. I, I think he got put on the spot. I think that he probably would have let it go a lot worse if DeSantis wasn't um, beating him to the punch on a lot of things. And DeSantis kept on having the heroic um, speeches and saying all the right things. And Abbott was losing a lot of the limelight. So he had to come out and you know, we're sitting here, we're still dealing with this stuff. You know, he was, he was just be a trendsetter. I mean, yeah, he was a little bit late to the party. Absolutely. He's a reactionist is what Abbott is. And you know, and the sad part about it is, um, is you have to get somebody in that position. that's going to have the gahunis again to be able to make that, make that change. I mean, so you, you have, you have two options here. You get somebody that gets in there and then they get bought and paid for and they sell their soul out just like Abbott. Right. Or you actually get somebody in there that says, you know, hey, I'm in there. I bluffed all these people enough as far as the the donors and yeah. all that, that thinking that you're part of the establishment. And I bluffed enough people to get in there that now we're going to make some change and let's clean house and see how you may you may serve a term. Uh, you may be maybe the first governor to get assassinated or something like that. But at least you're going to go in there and make a difference. You know what I mean? Yeah, and uh, I'm God, you know, know. upset some people. Yeah, I'm not saying that we're going to assassinate anybody. At CDC. I'm saying, no, saying no, that no. you would go in there and make <laughs> enough change to where people would, people would. Now we got to get this guy out of office one way or another, but, right? But or that does way. put it in perspective how powerful this systematic. Well, we talk about it all the time. Everybody talks about systemic racism and systemic this that. I think the most systemic thing is our government. I think it's a. You talk about the biggest divide and conquer in the world. It's a two party system where they're both actually one party just playing volleyball. Behind the scenes, all one party. Well, That's you know, beliefs. some of the greatest words ever said is, you know, when the government fears the people, there's liberty. And when the people fear the government, there's tyranny. The people fear the government right yeah. now. Right. The government, you know, you go down to Washington, D.C., and you don't sin and you don't break the law mm -hmm. and you, peacefully protest and you you're still sitting in jail right right so i mean you have to be careful i mean the witch hunt of going after people and their taxes because you're conservative you know and trying to find some way to be able to to um to 
quieten those people or to, to squelch their voice and keep them off the streets. I mean, that that's a witch hunt by all means. It should be illegal, and whoever even even um, headhunts on that should should be held accountable to the fullest extent. Right. 